Hello everyone. In this series of lectures, you will be studying about straight lines. So basically, we will start with the uh, start of defining what a straight line is. Uh, by that, I mean what what does the equation for straight line tells you. Then uh, then we will learn about what we can do with straight lines. By that, I mean how can we find uh, uh, the distance of a point uh, to the straight line, the perpendicular distance. How do you obtain the image of a point based on a line right then how do you uh, find the angle between two straight lines right so these things will be studied later on right so first we will look into different representation of straight line before we do that let's let me revise on uh, the gradient the concept of gradient and in uh, gradient right okay right so what is a gradient given two points when if a straight line goes through these two points, we can define a gradient. So, what is a gradient means? Uh, it means the slope, slope of a line, right? How steep it is. Suppose we have a line that goes through these two points, right? X1, x comma, uh, x1, y1, and x2, y2. Then the gradient is defined as. So this distance would be the difference in y coordinates and this distance would be the difference in x coordinates, right? x2 minus x1, then y2 minus 1. The gradient, right, usually denoted by m, simple m, is, denoted, uh, is defined as y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. This is the gradient. So this is how you find the gradient of any straight line. If you need two points, if you can find two points on which the straight line moves through, then you can find the gradient of this line. Right? This is called the gradient. Now, if the angle, if the angle that the line makes with the positive axis is given instead, right? If the angle that uh, the line makes with the positive axis is given instead, then gradient can also be find, found in that way tan theta. Right? The tan value of this angle gives you the gradient. Right? These are two different ways that you can find the gradient, but mostly we would be using this method. Right. So notice here, now uh, here this angle is acute, this angle is acute. If theta is between 0 and pi by 2, then m would be positive. Gradient would be a positive value. The stand theta would be positive. Okay. That means if the line makes an acute angle, up to this point, you get a positive value. If theta is beyond this value, pi, then you get a negative gradient. Then we have an angle like that, right? So in that case, you get a negative gradient. So keep that in mind. If you get a negative gradient, then you know the line makes an obtuse angle with the positive x-axis. And that's a different. Right. Okay, so uh, when when theta is pi by two, when theta is pi by two, then m is not defined. Right, m is not defined. So you can't define the gradient because when theta is pi by two, that means the straight line is vertical. In that case, you don't get a difference into a difference of uh, x coordinates. So the difference of x coordinates will be zero. Metana zero nagamang m undefined. Infinite another undefined theta. Undefined, 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 undefined. Okay. Right. So uh, we assume that the theta is not equal to pi by two. For any other theta values, we can define the gradient. Okay. So this is the gradient. Right. So let's see what equation of a straight line means. Now, what is a straight line? If you draw a straight line, it's actually a collection of points. A straight line is a collection of points. Or we can call it a set of points. Set is actually a collection of objects. 
So a set of point means actually a collection of points. So when you collect all these points, then you get a straight line. So straight line is a one dimensional object. Uh, but you can't actually say that because a one dimen this one dimensional object is made up of zero dimensional objects. Zero dimensional objects means points, right? It's an infinite collection of points. So uh, when these points represent a straight line, they, they, uh, yeah, yeah, they represent a straight line. Okay. Good. So equation of a straight line. Now we need to give them a name, right? There are numerous, I mean, uh, different human beings on the world. So we have to identify each one of them. So we give them a name. Kekkanat kekkanam thino, races thino, religion thino. Evage we have to categorize them. So in, in the world of straight lines also we have to represent them. So there are different representation. Kaharita races vage, different races vage, different representation. But they are all human, right? Like, so they are all straight lines, okay? But there is a standard uh, representation that, a general form, uh, yeah, standard representation that we use uh, throughout uh, the questions. Uh, but there are other representation aspects. So all these representation represent a line. It is like a name given to a straight line. Okay. So first of all, we will start off with uh, the basic and the well-known one that is called the gradient intercept form. Right. So this is called the gradient intercept form. Why? Because it shows you gradient and intercept directly. So it's written as y equal mx plus c. So this is the first kind that we have learned in a whole world. y equal mx plus c where this is the gradient and this is the intercept. So if I show it uh, on the card is in plane, y equal mx plus c, you have a gradient, right? So we, we have defined the gradient. Then you have this point, the y intercept where the line cuts the y axis that is called y intercept. So this value is this. The same value. It's very easy. Right. So let's look at another representation. Now, how do you represent an equation of a line when a point and a gradient is given? Now let's get into that. Right. So how do you represent an equation of a line given a point and a gradient? This is easy. We have done this. So equation of a line is actually uh, that that represent all the points the line goes through. Right? All the xy points or xy coordinates, the line goes through. Right? So uh, we have to find an equation that includes x and y. Right? So earlier we saw that y equal mx plus c, it includes x and y. Right? All the xy points are necessary. So when a gradient and a point is given, how do you find the equation of a line? That means how do you find all the xy points? This is what we could do. Now, you saw that uh, uh, we defined the gradient of a straight line. How did, did, how did we define the gradient of a straight line? When two points are given, then we can find the gradient, right? This is exactly what we are going to do. So, we are going to represent the general point on this straight line. Let's call it P1, X, Y, a general point. This could be anywhere. It's a general point. So, the gradient is given, therefore, m is equal uh, y minus y naught, y minus y naught divided by x minus x naught. This was the gradient, right? This was the gradient, exactly what we did. So let me just cross multiply this, then we get y minus y naught equal m times x minus x naught. So this is the equation of a line when a point and a gradient is given. So you can further simplify this if you want, otherwise you can leave it like this. Right. So let's look at an example. Gradient is given, they say gradient is negative 7 and goes through this point. So gradient is given, point is given, all you do is like this, y minus y coordinate is 3 equal gradient is minus 7 then x minus x coordinate. This is it. Very easy. If you want, you can convert this to gradient intercept 4. 
the subfield. Right. So how do you find the equation of a line given two points? Now the gradient is now given, only two points are given. So if two points are given, then you can find the gradient. Right. So after that, you can refer to the earlier method. One point and a gradient. Right. So here's the thing. First, find the gradient. M is what? M is y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. This is the gradient. Now pick a point, pick a point and write down the uh, equation y minus any point, either this or that. Uh, say y naught equal, here it should be the gradient, so y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 into x minus x naught. That's it. If I pick this point instead, then here y minus y2, then x minus x2. The rest is the same. Okay. Right. Next, if two intercepts are given, x intercept and y intercepts are given, that means uh, where the line cuts the x axis and where the line cuts the y axis are given, then how do you represent the equation of a line? This is very easy. Uh, keep this in mind. What I do, I write x then divide by its intercept A, then plus Y divide by its intercept equal Y. That's it. It's very easy. You can cross multiply this and uh, simplify it if you like, but uh, otherwise you can leave it as it is. Right. So let's try an example. Right. So now uh, given two intercepts, what are the intercepts? 0, 8 and minus 3, 0. So you can do a small sketch if you like. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, plot these two points, minus 3, 0, it's somewhere here. So I'm going to put minus 3 and 0, 8. 8 is somewhere here. So I'm just going to put 8. This is a straight line that moves through these two points. So the equation would be x divided by minus 3 plus y divided by 8 equals 4. So I can further simplify it and y divided by 8, this becomes minus, so x divided by 3 equals 1. That's it. See how easy this is. Right. So this is another representation. This won't come up much. Right. Uh, okay. So given angle and the perpendicular distance from the origin. Suppose you have a straight line. Right. So what they are giving is this perpendicular distance will be given. Let's call it P. Right? Perpendicular distance is given. And the angle this makes with the x-axis is given. Right? These two are given. Now, from the earlier representation, you know that if you know the two intercepts, then you can write down the equation of a line. So, we are going to use that technique. And we are going to find these two lengths. Right? So this is alpha, this should be 90 minus alpha because this is 90, then this should be alpha. Okay. And here this should be uh, 90 minus alpha, so we don't care. Now how do you get this length? Okay. So suppose this is B and this is A. Since this is a right angle triangle, so when you can consider this right angle triangle, B would be hypotenuse, right? So B is hypotenuse. So B sine alpha would be P. So in this case, B sine alpha would be P. See? Opposite to the angle. Right? And here, when you consider this triangle, A would be the hypotenuse of this triangle. So A cos alpha would be P. So this implies B equal P over sine alpha and A equals P over cos alpha. Now we have this and that. So we can write down the equation X over A plus Y over B equals 1. X over A. A would be uh, X over P cos alpha. So I'm going to write cos alpha here divided by P. P then Y sine alpha 
divided by pi equals 1. Now we have p in the denominator. So I'm going to cross multiply by p the equation, then I get x cos alpha y sin alpha equals p. This is the other representation. So this won't come up much, but uh, you should know, right? Anyway, right. So this is the form that we use the most, right? So there will be another form uh, that is called the parametric form. We'll get into that next. So we are going to use these two forms interchangeably, but mostly this form, right? So it's not like uh, gradient intercept form where y equals mx plus c is given. In this case, all the terms are on one side, right? On the other hand side, you have zero, right? Everything on one side, the other side has only zero. So this representation very important, ax plus by plus c equals zero. It is the standard form of a straight line. There are all level of y equal mx plus c. Abhi ne, abhi me, right? So how do you obtain the gradient? So the gradient to obtain the gradient, we are we will write the, we will convert this to gradient intercept form. If we convert this to gradient intercept form, then by equal minus ax minus c, then y equal minus a over bx minus c over b. So in this case, gradient would be gradient would be minus a over b. This is the gradient. Okay. Gradient, this is actually a. And the intercept is this. Intercept is minus c over b. Now, I'm, I'm not going to write C here for intercept, and then you will construe that C with this one. So, totally two different things. So, this is how you obtain the gradient uh, from the standard form of a line. So, this is very important. It's very important how to obtain gradient of a straight line given the standard form. Minus, minus, Coefficient of a x divided by coefficient of b. That is my gradient again. So now we are going to see how to represent a line using parametric form. So you learn about parametric form under the topic differentiation. Well, under Gana Guttenava part a kata parametric form will link the Liberavella. Differentiate kala equation of tangent line, equation of normal lines by and there. So what is the parametric representation? So in parametric representation, we are going to represent both variables x and y in terms of a single parameter or single variable. So that variable is called a parameter, usually represented as t, because sometimes we use t for time. The uh, time x and y coordinate represent when we hear pen and hinda t pavichikar no Right. So this is how we are going to do it. So remember uh, the representation of a line when a point and a gradient is given. We are going to use that representation. Y minus Y naught equal M times X minus X naught. Right. So what I am going to do here is that I am going to divide this equation by M. So Y minus Y naught divided by M. X minus X naught divided by 1. Right. May ratio equal constant. This ratio is constant. Okay. So let me call this equal to P. Right. This is a parametric representation. Methanin tamai gaane. Methanin gaane. From this we can obtain values for y and values for x. So we are we are T is a parameter. separately gum so y minus y naught over m equals t then y equals m t this becomes plus y naught see on the y coordinate then what about x coordinate x minus x naught divided by 1 equals t x equal 1 times t that is t plus x naught. Right. So let me just write it like this x naught plus t and uh, y naught plus 
m times t. These are parametric representations. See, x is represented by a variable of uh, parameter of t, and y is represented as a, a para in, in terms of a parameter t. So we can represent any point on this line, any point on this line, right? So what is the point? X coordinate is x naught plus t, and y coordinate is y naught plus m times t. Make a hurry up. This is actually uh, don't write this. Make a little bit more. S equal u t. Okay. S equal u t. Yeah. This is this looks. I mean, this is analogous to the velocity. Me a velocity. Me a time. Got to velocity into times gives you the displacement. Or na y or displacement. Take when x or displacement. Take. These x naught and y naught would give you the initial point. Go ahead and start. Kare. तर स्टार्ट कर पे के ना एक तमाय डिस्प्लेसमेंट टेका गान तर में एक ऑप्शन है कॉल भी दिया गान ने में तो नदी हर ये टा टाइम में गान देख के एक्स एंड वाई बेरी बने थे तमाय दिस रिप्रेजेंटेशन इज वेरी इम्पोर्टेंट व्हेन वी आर डीलिंग विथ क्वेश्चंस सो सम क्वेश्चंस आर इज़ टू हैंडल बिफी � अलफाबीट alphabeta point taking m right find the parametric representation so to find the parametric representation first we need to find the gradient right gradient of a line so given this line what is the gradient first of we'll find the gradient so gradient would be minus coefficient of a divided by coefficient of b make the matra diagon known ne matra diagon known ne karlagan ax may be the nature minus ax when one then divide by the whole thing then uh, c also becomes minus c you divide the whole thing by b so you get this right then we can write it like this one so uh, these are the points so y minus beta equal minus a over b times uh, x minus f x minus f right Okay, so now I'm going to rearrange this. I'm going to put minus a over here, y minus beta over minus a, then x minus alpha over b equals, may ratio equal, equal not t, where t is a parameter. So now we can with t is a parameter. Okay. From this we can get y equals when we get y equals plus beta when we get beta minus a into t minus a t then x equal this becomes plus alpha then plus b t so this is the representation so I can represent any point any point on this line, let's say this is P. So, x coordinate would be alpha plus B times T and um, y coordinate beta minus A T. Okay. This is the representation, parametric representation of this line. From a standard form, make a parametric representation, right? Beta minus A T alpha plus b. Right. So let's look at another example. Right. Another example, line that is perpendicular to Lx plus My plus n equals 0 and goes through alpha beta. So if I were to sketch it, this is a line that is perpendicular to this line. So suppose this is a line Lx plus My plus n equals 0. So notice that I have changed 
Say gradient of Lx plus My plus N equals zero is let's call it M one would be minus L over M. Right. So gradient of perpendicular. Gradient of perpendicular line, let's call it M two, would be the reciprocal of this with the sign change. Change the sign if it is positive, we change it to negative. If it is negative, change it to positive, and take the reciprocal. So M divided by L. Right. So do not confuse this M with. Uh, let me use another thing. Right. So let's uh, P say P. And uh, here, let's call it C for P. Uh, then would be L divided by P, and P divided by. Ha. Tera arg confuse ni mete name tiye ni hinda question ni gradient. Okay. Right. So now we. Determine the gradient of the perpendicular line, and it goes through alpha beta. So we start off with the equation y minus beta equal p divided by l gradient times x minus alpha. Then this is y minus beta over p x minus alpha over l equal to t, where t is a parameter. T is a parameter. This will give us. Me go go look at the bar under y equal a general point on this line p t plus beta. So beta plus p t and x equal alpha alpha plus l t. Right. So this line can be represented as uh, alpha plus l t and beta plus p. उटलेट दी एंगल बिटवी